Nation Radio. All right. Thanks for listening while we take that short break here at Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. Good morning, Revolution Radio, and welcome into Cultivating Consciousness. I am your hostess, Kelsey Sweet. Welcome to Studio A, and I am so excited to be back with you today after a brief hiatus, trying to catch up with my life and do all the the real-life responsible things, I suppose. And so here we are, Cultivating Consciousness, bright and early in the morning, depending on where you're at in the world. Could be dark and early for you, like it is for me. I have the 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. slot here on Revolution Radio every Wednesday morning, so we can do things like cultivate consciousness, so on and so forth. But for me, if you're here with me on the West Coast, it is nice and early. It's a nice crisp 3 a.m., and I will be with you until 5 a.m. here chugging down some coffee, getting my... getting my consciousness thing woke I don't know how we talk about consciousness anymore it's one of these bizarre topics but again I'm so grateful for this revolution radio space to have the opportunity to have these conversations with you with the world however they manifest themselves and if you're so grateful to revolution radio as well because we are your number one listener supported online radio station we've been around for a while We would like to continue to be around, and if you're able and capable and willing to do so, please donate to our station. You can go to freedomslips.com or revolution.radio, and you can go to the donation section, and you can follow the instructions. You can write some checks. You can mail it in, or you can go to Patreon, and you can find us on Patreon and support us there as well. There's a lot of different ways that you can make this happen. For me, Kelsey Sweet, if you want to find out more about me, go to kelseysweet.com and there's all kinds of random little tidbits and this and that of everything that I do. Well, I guess little bits and pieces of things that I do. I'm a complicated, complex person, so good luck trying to figure that one out. I'm still trying to figure myself out. On that note, I'm super excited to come back after being, being gone for a couple of weeks. I have a guest with me this morning and I'm I'm excited to get into this conversation because we've gotten to talk a little bit in the background kind of about like how we're going to merge our minds in this setting and in this context, but it's all free flow from here. And like many people in my life, I find them through the synchronicities of social media online and they find me in different ways. And so, um, We'll get into the introductions. Keenan Booker is my guest this morning. And Keenan's Keenan's an interesting person. And I've gotten to I've gotten like just to like scratch the surface in his work. And I'm so excited to like dive deeper into this. Because he's got such a complex background and like myself, as as someone who is an integral scientist perhaps, or an integral integral type person. Keenan's similar. He's got a background in anthropology, biology, astrology, law, psychology, sociology, world history, and theology. And he's created a publishing company called Stargate Publishing and Conscious Films, which I think is great because he gets into this environment where he can dive into some pretty complex stuff. And I'm excited to, I don't know, I'm just excited to pick your brain even more, Keenan. Are you here? Yeah, I'm right here. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning. Okay. How are you? Are we uh, doing video screens? Is this a video call or is this just only audio? Um, the audio side of it's going through the radio and it's live streamed now. I do have us um, recorded through my own stuff. So we can, like, on my end, I can see you a little bit. Um, oh, I didn't know if this show was a video <laughs> show. It's up to you. Um, if you choose to put your video stuff on here, and I upload this later, I do have a YouTube channel, hashtag Cultivating Consciousness. Um, yeah, we, um, we, there, can do a, there. we can do a split video because it's better for my communication style. Sure. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, if you give me a moment, um, I'll put my face on there too. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, good morning, Keenan. How are you? Morning. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. I'm I'm waking up. I had a I had kind of like I don't want to call it a late night. Oh look, there I am. I'm like, oh, I'm still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm here for the consciousness show. Uh, my name is Keenan Booker. Uh, right now, I'm promoting my three book series um, on the Medieval Times called Kicked Out of Heaven Untold History of the White Races from 717 AD. Um, it's a three volume series. It's pretty heavy. It's uh, it goes over there's executioner's diaries, their personal diaries inside the literature. There's uh, traveling guides explaining vagabonds and cut purses all throughout Germany. There's a thousand years of uh, there's a thousand years of natural disasters. Um, documented in it and the natural disasters are very peculiar um so that's why i had to go over them there's a lot of situations um dealing with the little ice age that occurred from 1300 to 1700 that affected all of europe um pretty drastically there's reports of 100 pound hailstones um that were 15 inches wide in circumference you have uh, there's a situation in Italy where there was no sun for consistently three years and it rained every day. There was, and it created a lot of famines. There was a lot of floods. Um, there's a lot of situations of uh, locusts taking over the city or, and creating famines because of their feces or the, the putrid uh, stench that they left behind because of the of, from being killed you know by the populace by the people who were there who were trying to stop the locust infestation you also have reports of that with mice um there's one report where a whole city was taken over with mice and it was overran with mice for like three four days while the whole city while all the community was out trying to kill the mice um, out of nowhere, the sky blackened and a whole thousands of owls came out of nowhere and just swarmed down on all the mice, killed all the mice. So basically, I'm just giving you a little small brief of a lot of facts that are documented by the chroniclers of a multitude of different kingdoms from a multitude of different time periods that span well over 400 to 500 years that uh, were introduced to our generation basically is Walt Disney cartoons. So a lot of the stuff that you saw in Walt Disney or even Warner Brothers are actually documented as facts in uh, old Europe, even all the way down to the sword being in the stone, which is um, a real situation. There's a real sword in the stone, I think, in its, uh, a French church. I forgot the name of it. But I do have pictures of it in my third volume. Um, that's just one thing. There's many, many, many more, you know. So I think my most like the most fascinating like fascinating part of history to me is if we want to know where we're going, we have to know where we've been. And so I'm curious to know what what inspires you most to put your emphasis and to put your focus on history? And like, what has inspired you to start at those time periods? And how, how do you go about like finding the information? Um, well, one thing I understood is with a lot of the complex situations that we're seeing today, um, to discover the origins of them and 
why we're uh, socializing the way we are. Um, you have to go inside history. Now, in order to go inside of history correctly and be invited inside the realms that I'm in right now with the medieval, you're going to have to be an adept. And that's an adept pertaining to how you operate, you see, uh, when it comes to information. If you recall all the subjects that uh, you stated I'm educated in, which I, I've educated myself in, were anthropology, biology, astrology, you know, so on and so forth, psychology, sociology, those things I've uh, researched on my own. I've educated myself on. So, for instance, if I were to uh, go to a university, a Harvard or a Yale, okay, they're only going to give you uh, the results of the last professor's conclusions or the last generation's conclusions pertaining to the subject. They may give you a couple of classic points that were discovered or that were uh, that the whole theory or their whole course is based off of coming from the ancient times, sort of like a Isaac Newton or a Rene Descartes or, uh, you know, a Machiavelli or things like that, which are philosophers. Philosophers are really the true glue of society besides the worker. Okay, the philosopher is more like the mind of the society and the worker is the hands. So in today's standpoint, we don't really have true philosophy. And uh, pertaining to the African-American race and the African-American race's age versus the age of other races on this planet also has never experienced a real philosopher. Um, in America, you know, they've all been a religious oriented when it comes to those who have been called leaders and to be religious oriented, you definitely cannot be a philosopher because a philosopher is studying the behavior and the activities of uh, the religion and how people correspond with their religion, how religion corresponds with the state, how religion corresponds with the bank, so on and so forth, you know. So um, you got to study a lot of different areas about existence in order to be invited into deeper areas of history. If you don't understand human operation and if you don't accept uh, certain layers of information like astrology or uh, alchemy or metaphysics and things of that nature then you're not going to be a you're not going to be invited or knighted into a lot of different areas of history because the activity that's going on will not be you won't be able to explain it so basically you won't be able to see it or hear it either i think with like the integral lens and being able to take multiple standpoints is really helpful in trying to bridge the gaps, right, between all these modes of information because there's so much there. And you're right, like when we look backwards and we go backwards in time, we're left to fill in certain gaps. And if you, if you hold yourself to one field of study, then you ultimately end up in a tunnel, but by expanding your awareness through these different fields, then you get a more broad view or a more open view of the human experience as a whole. So I really appreciate your approaches into that. There's a lot of people, especially within academia, who, who pick a tunnel and then they stick with it and they, like, they're like they dedicated to that tunnel with that one focus for the rest of their life. And I think it really limits the scope of solutions, because I think what we're, as far as like what I try to do with this show here, especially is inspire people to be creative and to come up with creative solutions to the many problems that exist in the world, because here we are co-creating 
the future within every within every breath, within every moment. So it's interesting, I think, to go back in time and to bring forward some of these old I ideas. And in the chat room, as I'm reading the chat room and as you're speaking, it's come up a couple of times, but like time travel is like a as a concept of portals or creating a portal in time to bring forward different information and I guess like as a as a researcher, I'm somebody who who looks into consciousness within the different realms, like how how is it that you connect to the information or how do I pose this? When when talking to artists or musicians or whatever, we have this conversation of tapping into a source or tapping into a channel, right? Or like channeling in this information. And I'm curious to know whether or not like as you, especially as you write and synthesize this information, if you liken it to channeling or if you feel like you're connected to something else that's helping you to diffuse this information, Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you can call it an immaculate conception type of scenario. And um, my birth, I'll start out with my name. My name is Keenan Booker, which means, which Keenan is Irish for ancient. Keenan goes also, Keenan has a lot of metaphysical lines to the word. So you got Canaan, Canon, uh, Canaan, you see? Those three, K9 is also another one. So those four layers when it comes to the history of the land of Canaan, um, writing a canon, a book, you know, um, all of those are correlated with my name, Kenan. So then my last name is Booker, which is Anglo-Saxon, the bookmaker. So by name right, which is also a birth given right, um, my name is Ancient Bookmaker. So I already have rights over all ancient literature automatically. My birthday is August 2nd. Um, August 2nd is also the same birthday as Wes Craven, who did uh, all of the Freddy Krueger movies and all of the, uh, the Jason and uh, Friday the 13th, you know, all of that type of stuff before. So, and I research a lot of individuals who were born on August 2nd, just like the individual who uh, drew the blueprint and designed the Statue of Liberty. He was also born on August 2nd. Individuals born on August 2nd contain worlds with them, basically. So um, that's what happened with me. You know, I had a world that was born with me, and that world was the medieval. And, you know, um, my brain is wired up to comprehend and to be able to handle all of the deepest realms of uh, Europe. And I do mean, and actually right now I'm in deeper realms that are, I'm in realms that are actually darker than the medieval right now. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Um, you know, so you're built for certain things, you know? And certain days of the year and timing, it's all different immaculate conceptions, basically. Um, your unison, what's on the other side of that coin for you, though, will maybe be a long journey for you to compute that or complete that. And the reason in being is because we're not in a society that gives you this level of intelligence about existence. Um, your occupation is going to always be found in your name. And that is old medieval law as well. So, but a lot of people don't know how to go about that. So, uh, for instance, the last name, uh, Robinson, the son of Robin, the word Robin means to be bright. Okay. Robin is also the same word as uh, Bart or Bert. So, Dilbert, Wilbert. Um, with the bird on it is also bright. Bright is the fallen angel. The fallen angel has to take. And take is stealing of the art, it's the fine art. You understand? 
So, and stealing is how we survive. Hence, that's not what it's called in the animal kingdom, but that is how we identify it in the human kingdom. You see. So, um, a Robin, a son of Robin, which you have to flip the last part in front of the first part. So, a Robin's son is a son of Robin, which is actually the son of a thief. So, he's going to be a thief. Now, his style of stealing may be completely, may be a, a completely different system in America or in today's understanding with our modernization. You, his, his form of stealing may be stock market on how he moves with, uh, you know, selling and trading, but it's not necessarily stealing by law, but the style of what is being done is a steal. Okay. So it's sort of like in baseball, when you steal the base, you see how the word is still being used, but it's used in a different context and a different field, but it still has the same application of usage. See, so that's the same thing with names, and there's uh, your occupation will be encoded inside your name at all times. So that's the same with the uh, a name like Thompson. Thompson would really be Thompson. It wouldn't be Thompson. It would be Thompson, and he would be the son of the Thump. So that would be uh, a fist. That would be he would be a good boxer or something good with his fist. You see. But a person that's living with that name in today's stance wouldn't even know that. They would just see their name as a Thompson and then, or they would see their name as Thompson and wouldn't even be uh, enunciated correctly. And then this person may be, you know, uh, a, a garbage man for 20, 30 years. And he was supposed to be a boxer or a, a boxer trainer or maybe somebody specialized in jiu-jitsu or something of that nature because it was He's hand oriented, you know. Why do, was, you, why do you think people are like what? What do you think happens to people when they're not in alignment with their name? Like, uh, like I said, they end up, you know, being a mailman. But why? Like, why is why why? <laughs> like, is it because because of? Like the toxic energies, I don't know if toxic is even right the right word, but because of the energies that come through the medieval that have detached us or perhaps like moved us away from source or no, no, you have to understand that like, a, like more like energy, a frequency thing, like an energetic frequency thing. No, there has been no dark age in between now and the medieval times. So everything that we exist off of now is based off the medieval. What you have to understand is, is that the medieval times is like that thin little time, that thin little space in uh, the sand time, you know, the hourglass, when you turn the hourglass over, yeah. that thin little space in the middle, that's what you call the medieval times. So you have the ancient world here, okay? And then you have the modern world, okay? A little tiny space right there is the medieval. We actually compiled in all the different magic systems of the old world was compiled, melted, and merged in through a multitude of different plagues. And I mentioned plagues because the plagues allowed a soup to be developed, a soup of a multitude of different cultures and all of their magic systems which these different cultures were the Moors, the Saracens, you have the, uh, the Gypsies, you have the Turks, you have uh, ancient Roman um, mythology and magic stemming over, ancient Greece, you have ancient Egypt stemming over, you have the Alexandrian uh, library that was going on at that time. You also have, uh, come on, what's that? Oh, old Celtic was also um, on top of a lot of the information. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of Nordic as well. So there's a lot of different systems that you got to sort of be briefed or educated on that were merged together through a mass amount of death, okay? Which was, uh, this death is cloaked with the word plague and the activities of a multitude of different plagues that occurred over the stem of 300 to 400 years. Okay, 
that um, created America and birthed America. And that's why when America is originating, we go through what you call the Victorian age. And you see a lot of people wearing black, as black as the color of birth from the unknown. So um, that, that was a little alchemical thing right there. So that's how it came to our society and built up a lot of things. Now you have the African-American slave trade that occurred and none of these individuals in the slave trade were educated. And you also have a lot of the situations that stem from the Caribbean as well, which actually ended up over in the Louisiana, the Louisiana region with the French. And then you got specks of it on the islands around Florida, the islands at the bottom of Alabama and on the outside of South Carolina. Okay. You'll find specks of the whole Creole culture, the, you know, more based in Florida, the Cuban thing and all of that. But besides that, those and, and the reason why I had to draw that separation line is because the islanders um, culturally are educated with uh, Catholicism and uh, Voodoo. Vodun, and there's a sprinkle of other elements there, Palo Mayambe, Palo Monte, da, 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 so on and so forth. So there's uh, a split in intelligence line when it comes to the development of America and the African-American. There is no education or thorough understanding of Catholicism or voodoo for the African-American without this complex, without this complexity of thought. You don't have a human in reality the for you to be based as a human or to be uh what i would like to say etherically or uh classified as a human you have to have a mythology system you have to have a you know a god that you probably specifically killed for um you have to have uh a unison of thought and this unison of thought has allowed um defense and as i've stated we, there is no internal war structure, no history of that for African Americans. Um, there's a long list of things that uh, all other races have a history of on this planet that African Americans don't. So basically, a lot of the activity that you see it today with rioting and all of that, it's based on a lack of intelligence and also a lack of collective experience. There's no there's no mass hysteria experience, uh, basically, with African Americans, you know, and there most likely will never be, you know. Well, I think so, yeah. we bring this up in some of the introductions of, of your books as well, of how a lot of the concepts that you talk about are addressing the subconscious aspects of humanity. And I think it goes into, like, when we're talking about healing this, the ancestral trauma or going back through the lineage, when we look at how all of these key events have played into the psyche of humanity, we often, we don't think about it and we take it for granted. But so much, so much has shaped our culture that we were not necessarily aware of. And you hit on you hit on so many points, so it's difficult because you're so prolific in this. It's it's difficult <laughs> to start. Yeah, I'm with you. Don't go ahead. It's just it's so fascinating, and like by prolific, I mean prolific. I mean you have a multitude of books. I mean there's three within this series, and then your work has also been on ABC and Fox and NBC and CBS and CW and Telemundo, and so it's you've been able to get so much information out there that it, it's a lot to take in and a lot to chew. And so I guess for starting points or to orient people into their own personal growths and things like that, how would you suggest somebody go back into the knowledge to know where to start? Because you're right, depending, depending on your history, depending on your race, this information is going to hit you in a multitude of different ways. Um, yeah. The thing <laughs> is, no, it, because, you know, it, nobody's going to be able to go down uh, the same route. So, for instance, I've studied biology, okay? 
biology really includes no race. But then again, it does when you thoroughly understand it from an anthropological perspective. Okay, so that is uh, dealing with your culture, where it's been located over time, so on and so forth. So these are different subjects that are basically like, you know, they like merge together, they merge in and out. It's sort of like a bacteria type of alchemical uh, uh, alloy um, situation that's going down, shall I say. Um, to study your culture and your race is one thing. You're going to get angry. There's a lot of things that happened in history that you may want to cause revenge, you see. Um, and that's pertaining to a lot of different races in a lot of different situations, uh, especially when you want to sprinkle in religion. So um, when it comes to a lot of these type of situations, it's not necessarily that, you know, what I'm comprehending or how I'm comprehending or how one should go about it. It also has to do with your personal experiences in life and um, what type of development you've gained from your experiences in life. How many different cultures you've lived around, um, who you've sat down with, you know? So it's like when I've written a uh, book on medieval times, you know, but I've been with Polish women. I've been with, I've sat down at the tables with Italians. You know, I've, you know, I've been merged into the culture before I uh, wrote on it. And that's also inclusive with my name, as I stated earlier, that's Irish and French, you know, um, I mean, Irish and Anglo-Saxon, but then I have a lot of French dynamics about me as well. My uh, mother's name is uh, French. Um, she's her name is Denise, and that's named after Dionysius. So once you understand that, that's a whole nother level of existence too, is what type of gods and goddesses that may be encoded inside your name will also have a large effect on your occupation and uh, how you operate your life right now. A lot of people are actually reliving the full lives of gods, goddesses, and saints as well and they don't know it um because of their name and things and the way it's you know like an immaculate conception alignment type of thing where you know you fall into that category automatically no matter what you're doing um your life may be jammed up and you may go through a lot of health problems and you may go through a lot of uh incarceration jail and law issues or bad addictions because you don't uh, comprehend your lane in life and what you were supposed to be doing, or you've been uh, neglecting the signs because of the way you've been priorly educated inside this modern status, inside this modern world, you know. So it's, it's sort of like a matrix system, basically. And what I call it is living on the other side of the mirror, you know. What inspired the title for the series Kicked Out of Heaven? So you can go to kickedoutofheaven.com. You can find these books online. You can find them on Amazon if you're out there listening and wondering, you know, how, how do I find these books? Kickedoutofheaven.com is a good place to start. Yeah, okay. Um, the people. Um, when I got to this information, you have to understand that uh, it's been locked up. It has been locked up by lies. And uh, the souls that are in, and I have to speak like this because you will hear screams from witches that were burned inside this literature. You will hear the screams and uh, you will smell the smells of the air at that time. These books are literally a time machine and I've been told that by several different people. You will be fully engulfed inside the midi and um, I love the info. The reason why uh, the title Kicked Out of Heaven came about was because of the confusion, specifically in the weather section. The people didn't know if they were being punished by God or, 
or being punished by the devil or being punished by the devil because God sent the devil or being punished by the devil because of the devil's own trickery. So there was a high level of confusion that was going on that was based on theology. And this theology at this time was extremely based upon the stories of the saints and the laws of Catholicism. Um, uh, the King James Version Bible was written until 1611. This book goes from 700 to 1700. So we're talking about the Book of Hours and we're talking about the Book of Courage and the Book of Courtesies and other different small types of books that were being traveled around for educational purposes that were based with the theology understanding. And not only that, but the stories of the saints is what kept the people alive and kept the people um, searching for hope. And also the stories of the angels. Okay, And this is also why you see this today in a lot of medieval movies. You see the uh, the capture of insanity, which in reality may not be insanity at all. And this is where the there's a real thin line we call the twilight zone that was created in the medieval times, or not say not shall I say created, but discovered. The twilight zone wasn't really discovered until around 1700s. But what the twi twilight zone is, is thin space in between night and between dark and light. Okay. So this little space is where, you know, uh, leprechauns and fairies battle, basically. Okay. It's the little thin line right there. And um, when we say during this time period, People were based off of an intelligence of seeing angels and saints. There was a high level of hallucination going on. This hallucination is well talked about in volume two. This hallucination came from alcoholism, came from lead poisoning, came from syphilis, it came from typhus, it came from um, McCoyd syndrome, syndrome, and there's a lot of other elements. The scrofula that would encourage hallucination. Uh, specifically ergot poisoning, which ergot is the root chemical to LSD. The, due to the experiences that were going on at the time, the smells of multiple different types of carcasses, whether we're talking about cats being dead in the street or fish heads being sold in the market, the, the smells and the concoctions of what was going on in the air had a large possibility of adjusting the brain into a different dimension and having access to a different dimension. And this is where we find the stories of the undead, the witches. This is where we find the stories of leprechauns, trolls. This is where we find the brownies, where we find the wild man. This is where we find werewolves. This is where we find the whole gamut. But the whole thing is, is that, you know, it's just like I saw a statement today. The human eyeball only computes maybe 420 to 720 something uh, of the light frequency. We only get a very small percentage of the true aspect of the whole solar uh, light uh, frequency that's you know engulfing our planet. So due to the fact that we only see a small percentage of it, there may be much activity going on around us that we're not allowed that our eyeballs isn't uh, permitting us to see, okay? So with different types of adjustments to the mind through chemicals and a multitude of different experiences, um, physically dealing with uh, trauma, you know, um, you your brain can be adjusted into a different uh, dimension of sight. And uh, there's a lot of experiences of that inside the book. So that's why it was called Kick Out of Heaven. Uh, the people didn't know if they were in heaven or hell. They didn't know if they were being punished by God or the devil. And the entire thought during that time was based upon theology. That makes a lot of sense because there's a, a veil that had to be broken through. And it's interesting to put history into the perspective of like mass hallucinations and these realities right that were shaped off of 
just like a complete lack of understanding of biology, science, just kind of the basics, right? But more of an openness to being connected to the spiritual or to being connected to more abstract. And I think we've we veered away from that and like we kind of as a society in a whole really rely a lot on like data show me the facts show me this show, you know, and so i think there's definitely something to be said for like in consciousness like right learning how to expand our consciousness to really understand what it is that we're capable of doing and i'm glad you brought up sight and how just our our vision alone limits our capacity to intake the amount of information that's around us at any given point in time. And I remember going to a lecture several years ago of some researcher who had who had come in from I don't know, like maybe Seattle or something, but from the north, and his research was geared on like working memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. And he shows that in working memory, so in present time and here and now, we can only attend to four things at a time in our environment. So our eyes limit the spectrum of what it is that we can see, and then our attention span limits that spectrum even more. And then our concepts built into our attention again further limit our ability to see beyond that. So in opening up these little pockets within history, it really allows us to like, synthesize the information a little bit more, to awaken, to expand, to like open the mind, however you want to, however you want to phrase it, right? However you want to put the words into action there. Because words, words are powerful. Like you're saying with names, how we describe something, especially in history, the way we record something it has a resonance effect that impacts like us as a species, right? Throughout all of time, past, present, and future. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um that has a lot that has a lot to do with it. Um the word game is uh very in-depth uh understanding, you know. Uh, English. English is really the largest magic system that has ever been developed on the planet. Um, a lot of people don't understand language to be a magic system. It's spelling. A lot of I mean, it's right in spelling. You go to you do spelling in classes, you're writing spells. Right, right, right. right. And um, there's a lot of layers. Well, see, you, you have to have a process of understanding to comprehend words on that layer. And in order to do that, you would have to go through a multitude of different cultures. You have to go through a couple of different religions to understand how a word has been dragged through over time, how it has been utilized in different circumstances, which brings us to the application of it today. So I'll give you a short example of this with the word relax, um, or even the word devil's advocate. The devil's advocate and the word relax come from the same time period in the same situation. This is the Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition is not the witch hunts of uh, what you saw in the municipality of what occurred from 1450 to 1750 throughout the courts of Europe. Um, the Spanish Inquisition is a different scenario that was uh, going after heretics and witches, but implicated a little bit different when it comes to the litigation on the process of, of questioning. And that's what torture is being called not, um, at that time. And that is why today, in essence, a question tortures the mind. Did you see that? Right. <laughs> the torture chamber in the 1400s and 1500s was called being sent to the question. Okay. So another word I was going to use was, uh, well, like I stated, The Devil's Advocate, which is a movie that recently came out. Um, the Devil's Advocate was a term that was used during the Spanish Inquisition classifying uh, a heretic. Okay? Uh, the heretical groups of those times, um, sort of like the Waldensians or the Albigenses or uh, Brothers of the Free Spirit, 
I do me, I do believe these are uh, semi orders that were passed down from Egypt through Greece through Rome and were embodied inside the Catholic Church through these uh, heretical burnings. Now, to go back to the original word that I wanted to explain was the word relax. The word relax was used by uh, Spanish inquisitors to take witches to the stake. When a witch was being take, taken to the stake, they would say, come, we're going to relax you now. You're going to be relaxed, which means to be burned at the stake. Right. Now, the word relax today is a word that implicates pacification. So, and it also it implies that an individual is against um, what you may be discussing or what you may be doing. So you impose for them to relax. If me and you are having a discussion about football and somebody shows up ranting and raving about baseball, we say, whoa, relax, dude, right? We say, relax. Now, when you say, whoa, relax, you're, you are casting a cloak of over a million souls, the people who died in the, the word relax, and they are affected by it, and they immediately calm down. Okay. Or when you also say you're going to relax, it would be close to the uh, status of sleeping, right? Sleep is the cousin of death, right? So that's the word relaxing. You say, oh, honey, I'm tired. I'm going to go relax. Puts it at the pacification status again, which is uh, employed by the implementation of all of the souls of witches and heretics that were burned during uh, the Spanish Inquisition. So this, basically what I'm showing you is, is that there's thousands of souls, millions of souls, shall I say, embodied in that word that, um, are, in acts, that are in activity whenever you use that word to enforce the definition of that word upon the person or the object that you're utilizing, casting the on. And you have to understand that all words are, are, are adjusted like that. So when we're talking about gods or goddesses being stuffed inside of words, um, that is the element. So like Thor and Thursday or Freya and Friday, it's the same type of uh, situation, you know. You hear. <laughs> Yeah, I, I knew that was a lot. So, you know, yeah, go ahead. We get it. We get a couple more minutes before we go on break here, which is like already like two hours always seems like a lot until you near the end of the first hour. And you're like, wait, we just started. Um, let's see here. Um, where to take this conversation? And a lot of those words are explained inside this series, okay? This is volume two, right? You see how thick it is. It's 666 pages, okay? This is the one that's explaining the hallucinations, witches, uh, werewolves in court. And we're talking about the direct transcripts from what was going on during the trial. Um, multitudes of different trials from the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, all the way until now. Well, I shut the door at 1700s because to find information from the 1800s is not that difficult. So, um, I... It was also mentioned or like early on in the chat feed that 1700 is also a portal, right? So then ties into this, the, the energetics back into the matrix, right? And trying to bring down, bring down the edges or bring down the, the veils within the matrix to uncover the truths of what humans are capable of. And when going through this much of like human history, why, like, why do you think people have to go or like had to experience this collectively. Like what is, what is it that you think the lesson is here for people to chew? Oh, I mean, I'm sure well, 
more than the real that. question is it's common courtesy. Well, we got to understand what happened and why everybody's having a problem with, you know, uh, Caucasians or Europeans on the planet. The reason in being is because in Europe, you went through a mass amount of experiences that ex that expedited your thinking by trial and error that other races didn't go through. And that's just the bottom line. So there's a lot of traumatic experiences that were coming from a multitude of different sources. And the number one source would be the weather, which is unknown on who's putting that together, you know, um, that enforced the mind to be very uh, at a high level of paranoia, at a high level of mass uh, hysteria, unison of thought, um, uh, especially experience in the realms of war um, and also in the realms of survival and also in the realms of falling in love with death and also in medical experiences. Uh, that's also that's pertaining to what executioners discovered, uh, what alchemists were uh, practicing during the time, the, uh, the pharmacopias and those who were developing the mummy style medicines during those times um, went through a mass amount of experiences that expedited the thought versus all other races on the planet. And that is why um, Europeans have a far greater industrial understanding. They have a far, far greater uh, understanding of law and the exercise within it because they exercised it throughout the multitude of different wars in the multitude of different conflicts throughout the different kingdoms. Um, yeah, and there's nothing you can really do about that. If somebody has more experience than you, they just have more experience, you know, and this experience um, brought enforced an observation of existence that discovered a multitude of different laws that uh, the rest of the human world does not operate by. One of these laws are natural law, you know, and uh, even though tribal people lived amongst more nature than what we would say Europeans did, if we were to look at it geographically, we were also to look at the animals in the region, there's no animals in Europe that can compare to the amount of animals that are in the tropical forest. But the thing is, it's not about the animals, it's about the observation and the application. Of, it's about uh, attaining the act of the animal, incorporating it into your character, and then utilizing it through your uh, operations, whether that be business, war, or even, you know, consummating uh, courting with a woman, okay? Um, all the activities that we see from the animals in our geographical region we're going to duplicate and this is um one of the things that europeans were able to master more so than any tribal people across uh the globe from what i've uh read in my studies and um that's just what happened now um until one can compete with that there's always going to be a problem and this is one of the real reasons why the word race is being used is because it literally is a race to catch up with the majority thought pattern that Europeans are using as a collective thought versus the minority thought pattern that the rest of the world is utilizing. Unfortunately, um, collective intelligence or human intelligence is by standard doesn't go past the age of 12, 15 years old. So uh, the majority of the natives or indigenous people that we're talking about, even a large realm of Europeans as well, will never get past the age of 12 to 15 within their cycle because of their experience rate and their own limitations, whether that limitation is psychological or physical. You know, and I had to say psychological because, you know, religion puts in a lot of limitations so um yeah people are psychologically bound people are bound by their uh, cultural history and people are also bound by their gender history we could take the same argument and apply it to gender um 
females do not have a um, large history of competition. So when it comes to the elements of war or when it comes to the elements of business survival, it's going to be very difficult because um, men have built these industries based on those principles, you see. so Female yeah. competition is definitely, it's an in, interesting energy to work with. Because it's, it's there, but it's so subtle. And I just feel like so much, so much of like the, the feminine energy has been suppressed within that. But then that takes us into like the new age, right? Or we're coming into the, like, right. the feminine era and waking into that. Now, when we say suppression, that means it's coming from an outside force. Your own lack of your own personal drive has nothing to do with the suppression. You see? So if you have the ghetto and you have a library across the street from the basketball court, you are not being suppressed if you're going to the basketball court. All right, we'll come back to this in just a few minutes and we'll keep this going into the next into the next hour, Keenan. All right. Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. This is Thomas, a.k.a. a mad painter. I'd like you to join me Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Open Canvas. Don't forget to bring an open mind. Yes, folks, that's right. Bring an open mind to an open canvas. Again, that is Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. You opposed government corruption. This is Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Galactic Interstellar Council on Revolution Radio Studio A, Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Join us as we traverse the Starseed Paradigm. As expressed in the time-space continuum that we know as the divine expression of love and light. Integrating this conscious unity into the galactic paradigm. So welcome all, both terrestrial beings and galactic beings as one. So be it. You're listening to Revolution Radio. It is no secret that the so-called mainstream media is best described as controlled propaganda. Countless news stories are either totally ignored or spun with half-truths, and because of this, essential facts and vital information are often compromised. Join Dr. Ott every Friday night on Studio B at 10 p.m. Eastern and learn why the story behind the story was nominated for a Peabody Award in its second year of producing unparalleled broadcasting excellence in 1997. That is, if you really care about learning the truth. I want to thank everybody for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. The one place where information never sleeps. Revolution, Revolution Radio. Thanks for listening while we took that short break here at Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. Welcome back to Revolution Radio. Welcome back to Studio A. And welcome back to Cultivating Consciousness. Taking a little bit of a, 
of a break, I guess, or a vacation as I'm coming into almost my second year here on Revolution Radio. I'm so, so excited, and I feel like there's so much angst and anticipation for all the fun stuff that will come forward into the future. That's just adding to my pile of overwhelm. <laughs> But thank you so much for joining joining me this morning, and thank you for supporting us here on Revolution Radio, and thanks for sticking sticking with us on Studio A. We love having you here, and I'm so, so excited to have my guest, Keenan Booker, on this morning, author and historian extraordinaire, medieval historian extraordinaire, because it's giving us such a an awesome opportunity, I think, or at least me, a good opportunity within this realm of cultivating consciousness. A good, like, centering point, right? Or a good foundation of knowing, knowing where to go from here. And what, what came to mind in closing out our first hour, kind of where my mind is at, is in, like, in the realm and the scope of, of choice, because Kenan, you had said something really interesting, right? Where when it comes to this idea of suppression or something holding you back, or the like, oh, I can't do that, the like the limitations, right? If there's going to be anything that's going to prevent us from growing, learning, doing, being whatever it is that we can fathom, right? It's it's our own limitations and our own beliefs. And although there are systemic forces that play into the matrix system that definitely direct and perhaps limit our choices, when it comes to the collective conscious, when it comes to co-creating a future for us, I think it's really important to expand upon this idea of what choice is and creating choices or how to look at opportunities and knowledge as choice. I'm curious, Keenan, what do you what do you think about choices? Well, to be honest, I don't think the majority of the human population is educated enough to make to make proper choices about anything. I agree. And from a behavioral standpoint, there's an antecedent, there's a behavior, and there's a consequence. And our choices are limited or are more determined based off our conditioned history, right? Based off our experiences. Because if we haven't been conditioned to do something, or if we don't have a concept for something, and we can't necessarily make a choice whether or not to do something. However, knowledge is power, and when you can expand upon the concepts that you have, especially at looking at like the the history or the concepts built into the history of words themselves, then by that standpoint, you might have an ability to make a choice, but this is where that the idea of consciousness comes in, right? Where if you've got that basketball across so, the basketball um, across the street. Choices, decision-making is going to be based off of existence. Now, it's only man and woman existing. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to be your maturity line and your experience with a male's experience with the woman and the woman's experience with the male. The higher rate of experience, the more uh, intelligent you are about existence. But a high rate of experience with the opposite gender in our modern context is called being a poor. So, <laughs> and that's for a male or a female. So, guess what? Maturity is found for a maturity for a female is found in testosterone. The male's body is built off of testosterone. Uh, the, the, the female's internal and external mathematic and complexity is a challenge for a male's psychological manipulation in our Western dynamic. That is how courting occurs. The mastery of psychological manipulation is in essence business. In understanding how the human mind operates, we can now sell product, okay? So the woman's body and her whole physiology and discovering it from the rooter to the tutor um, is learning the tricks and trades of business. So if we disorient this picture, like we're 
messing up the gender and the where there's no more gone with the wind romanticism that's in, in debted inside our uh, modern social structure, then guess what? You don't have any more development, okay? Because nobody cares about what they're developing for. Men develop for women, women develop for men. And if women aren't going to be in the quote unquote ownership status that men desire, hence the transpiration of the last name, then men have nothing to feel as if to protect or nothing to work for to bring back home to. There is no reward system. The destruction of the reward system inside the human psyche is also the allowance of the development of the robot. Well, that technology. destruction and that reward, that's like reward and punishment. And again, it's the very foundation of behavioral principles. And it that extends beyond humans. That goes into animals. It goes into the amoebas. So it doesn't surprise me at all that humans also take on these animal-like traits. Because really, at the end of the day, we don't learn any differently. The way we learn is the same. Right. And our maturity, uh, due, to, due to the fact that we've demonized um sex in america we've also retarded ourselves in the same essence sex is intelligence sex and exploration in ex insects is uh the development of the mind you know and the exploration of it and this expansion is also part of the reason why europeans dominate the planet they've got far more sexual uh, capacity and understanding and also emotional depth but that's also from the experiences of the plague and a lot of other things that occurred that enforced these uh these psychological spaces that the majority of other cultures don't have you know? it's an interesting insight it's definitely an interesting insight and i think one that many people many people must take for granted because I, I think we often separate ourselves so much in unimportant ways. Mm -hmm. like, like separating ourselves again from the history. But I mean, if you look at the, the operations within the system, we're prevented from knowing so much of our history. And I think that's because if we dumb down the people, right, then you can turn them into the sheep and then you can control them that much more for power, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the the history line was destroyed in men. Um, World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War. Uh, these wars were back to back, and for a long time period during the uh, what you want to call the fruit of America's development, and this was basically a slaughtering of male intelligence from passing down things. Uh, a lot of mystical elements that were carried on in old culture America, and then not only mystical, but industrial intelligence as well. And also, you know, small things like time capsules and all of that type of stuff was not carried on until our modern generation, because these are things that are quote unquote honorable and held up by men and not necessarily women. So uh, we've developed a society that is uh, based on uh, synthetic materials, and this is good to a certain extent because uh, this synthesizing has uh, allowed us to be more safe and has allowed uh, progression to be at an exponential rate. So uh, when, and that's related towards uh, technology and industry, of course. So um, there's pros and cons to it. But uh, basically, as of right now, the society is has been prepared to self-implode. And um, the majority of that is based upon giving it the whole feminine rule. A lot of people don't know what that is. And a lot of people don't know why that was never allowed in ancient times, neither. So... Um, Get ready for a crazy road, for a crazy ride. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the as I stated, the, a lot of intelligence was wiped out. Men don't know what they're dealing with, in, you know, in today's uh, world. And 
due to video games and a lot of other things that's been a lot of other synthetics that have divided male and uh, female, we now are at a standpoint where the female doesn't know where the male is and the male doesn't know where the female is. You know, um, that's thoroughly because of union. That's also because of single parent households and uh, how that whole plague thing has gone on for the past 10, 20 years. You know, or shall I say 40? Yeah. Like the gender roles, especially, are interesting, especially because we get into like the idea of like transsexuality, but we're also in a transition, right? Or like we're going through a time period shift. So it's interesting how you can see the the collective kind of like playing out these like very subtle microcosmic things. But if you're right, like if you if you really pay attention to some of these subtle dynamics, you can see how there are things that have happened in the past. Or like you're talking about how the like the archetypes for saints come through in people, or people are living out these experiences that they've been lived before and they've been done before. And perhaps it's karmic because maybe we haven't learned the lesson or something, or you can't necessarily destroy all the energy we try. We try really, really hard. I think across many, many cultures and I I think men men get a really bad rap for how destructive they can be towards women, but men destroying themselves in a lot of ways is a big topic. Cause I think a lot of like how kind of like within my own genetic background, I've got a Blackfoot Indian on my dad's side. And there's at one point the all like the best warrior men, right? They were all, they're all killed, castrated, destroyed. So you have like the strongest of the species that are eliminated and wiped out. And then we do this really stupid thing too as a species where we take the knowledge and we take the understanding and we're like, we just throw it away. And then we run away from it almost as a means to try to recreate it. But why are we trying to recreate something that didn't work? We just like perpetuate this weird cycle that just gets us locked into whatever, whatever the the matrix is. Is that is? Um. Well, the, now you're leaning into uh, financial social class systems, and who's going to stay on top? If I'm gonna, if I have a mansion, I'm gonna stay in my mansion. And if you live squalid as a peasant, then you're going to stay squalid as a peasant. Now, the lines in between man, who's living in the richness and who's living as a peasant is going to be based upon the parental love. Okay. Now, parental love is going to define security. So, parental love must also have ferociousness in order to secure, correct? The bird, the eagle, the tiger with the cub, hippo, the elephant, they must be ferocious in order to provide security to the suckling, correct? Yeah. This, you never know how to is, like the, right. like we emphasize love and kindness and peace, but there's right. this but urge this, that we have within us to Well, no, see, that's what I was just about to show you. I am protecting with the, for the security of my children, nobody else's. I have to have a ferociousness for a, and a love for my children. So that means we can either, if we're of the same species or of the same breed inside of the species, we can come to a common ground on how we operate to provide security, maybe for us as an immediate group or as an extended group, as a large group. Okay, more numbers, we provide more security, but. Well, once again, that is my breed within doing that with inside my breed or my species doing that inside my species. And as my species, I have no responsibility to take care of any other breed or species. This is where the line goes. Because the red ant doesn't take care of the black ant. A hawk doesn't take care of an eagle. Okay? Now, they might want to distort the lines of what you see on TV. And they say, oh, the lion is with the lamb now. And, you know, oh, this duck helped this hedgehog walk across the street. 
You don't know who cut on that camera. And you don't know if that hedgehog or that duck been sitting in the laboratory and been having its chemicals altered for the past four or five generations. So it has too much oxytocin or whatever chemicals inside of it to make it uh, denounce or revert against gender principle laws or when it comes to breed and species laws. You see, so a lot of the animals and a lot of the stuff that they're showing you on TV nowadays is is malarkey. You can automatically write it off because you don't know if it comes from a laboratory or not. And that's why the information I deal with is 1800 and uh, prior. The main reason is because the authors that were writing during that time had a way better food. They didn't have chemicals in the air. They had uh, most likely had a better sex life and had better communication with the opposite gender. And that means they had a way better clarity of thought when they were writing. Not only that, due to the fact that they were writing at those time periods where mass production was very low, they had more care for what they were writing and more insight on the information that they were seeking. You see? It wasn't factory. It wasn't, you know, uh, what you want to call conveyor belt. It wasn't, you know, factory produced, you know, don't put um, art does not belong on a conveyor belt. Art does not belong inside of a factory, you understand? And that is uh, the element on how I go about uh, history and, uh, um, you know, artifacts or antiques, anything of that nature to uh, overly verify what the information developed. But um, at the end of the day, there's a lot of gender problems. There's a lot of decision-making problems. And the decision-making problems that we're dealing with is also based off of a lack of intelligence. And the lack of intelligence is not only literature, but it's uh, based upon experience. Experience is the best teacher. So, um, and then we're not accepting the laws of biology, which there are laws in how the male and the female body matures over time. Um, there's a lot of litigations that we're not using in our society that's putting us all in a confusion and a very angry standpoint with each other because we don't know and nor is anybody seeking. And then they're being filled with a lot of synthetic chemicals that will make you operate in that anger format. So There like talk about all like the subconscious factors that play in like when it comes to just how our hormones are being thrown out of whack by food by chemicals even by like things they put in perfumes or just like sound sound especially or all the stuff coming in with 5g like just how color even just placement orientation like People are just so driven and shaped by this corporate market that I wouldn't be surprised if, like, people started coming out on conveyor belts and coming out in test tubes. And I'm reading, I'm reading some of the um, feedback in the chat, right? And there's there's some dialogue going on here about how how difficult it is to like bring children into this day and age because we don't really know what's going on for the future. And then just, it's kind of scary where just this lack of knowledge or this complete like dissolution of intelligence is taking us as a species because we're, we're disconnecting ourselves from that art and from that authenticity and getting into this very robotic sense. There's a lot of uh, lines here. And um, people don't want the truth of, what, of what's really going on. Um, it's going to hurt a lot of people because, like I stated, um, you know, I mean, I might as well just be frank. What's going on now is there's a lot of female rule. And can anybody explain to me why this was not allowed in ancient civilizations or in tribes? Nobody can bring that front. 
and they won't. Um, and the reason it being is because to women, it'll be considered offensive. And what we're talking about is uh, biologically women ovulate every three weeks. This biological alteration changes up their complete uh, decision-making skills. And, uh, you know, one week they'll say yes, the next week they'll say no to the, to the same exact thing. And it's not because of any form of unreliability or unbalanced situation. It's the fact that they ovulate. So, um, and to even go further than that, pertaining to where our society is at a, on a macro situation and the development of robot technology, this is also uh, a substitute that's being implemented. A lot of sexual substitutes are being implemented to separate the line in between male and female and to give this third space entity, whether that be a robot or a training, the uh, say-so power. This say-so power is balanced upon uh, the uterus, okay? Real ancient civilization documents state that, you know, the uterus is basically an outside alien. You know? Feels like it, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, I don't want this to be offensive to anybody, you know, but that's just what it is. This is part of the reason why we didn't allow women to get into sports. The jumping up and down and the relocation of the, of the uterus inside the body is what causes the majority of feminine diseases when we're talking about cysts or we're talking about tumors. Um, we're talking about uh, ovarian cancer, breast cancer. Uh, we're talking about headaches, we're talking about uh, problems with the liver, the bladder. All of these things uh, occur from the uterus moving around inside the body, you know, which also brings us to the hysteria, dementia type of thing that occurs in old age, which was another reason why uh, rule was not allowed for women, you know, and then uh, and why it was for men was because they experience age and there is no chemical alteration. Well, there is a chemical alteration if we were to look at things like McLeod syndrome, but once again, that is a syndrome. That is not a standard through all males, you know? So uh, that's the very linear, linear thinkers too. That's something that's been shown over and over. Women are very cyclical thinkers or we think like spider webs. We don't think in straight lines. Right. Um, there is reasoning for that. And we need to accept the positions of who we are and what we do as male and female. And then maybe once again, we can fall in love with each other and sing songs to each other like we used to. But if we don't uh, put these oddities or complexities inside of some type of box of fun and entertainment and encourage them towards each other more so than trying to make complaints towards demand, uh, you know, and demands at each other, then we'll have uh, a better commune. But once again, what we're really looking at is a multitude of races that know nothing about Western culture and have been enforced and led by Western culture the entire way. So they know nothing about uh, courtly love. They know nothing about, you know, uh, courting from knights. They know nothing about uh you know the roman desire you know the level of in rome women expected men to run up and take you know and that is a part of you know the european genetic makeup for their understanding and comp of male and female communication that is not a part of the makeup of um tribal peoples from across the planet and of other regions so to be a true ravager, as I stated earlier, to be to, have, to provide security, you have to be ferocious. There really is no true signs of ferociousness inside of any other uh, tribal or cultural people. You only find that in Greece, Rome, Europe. You know, and, and uh, this also goes with courting. Uh, you know, the whole Don Juan thing psychological manipulation and all of that. That is, as we are using the English language, comes from 
the elements of Western culture and how it was developed in Europe. And the rest of the world knows nothing. The, the most the rest of the world knows about that is maybe Cinderella or Snow White. <laughs> they know nothing about the true dynamics of uh, uh, manipulation, ravaging, possession, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? obsessive compulsive disorder, all of that type of stuff. That those are psychological throwbacks that come from traumatic situations of the play. You know, so yeah, that's the line. There is a line of psychological expansion, and Europeans have far more expansion because of trial and error that occurred over a mass amount of time and also occurred over a mass amount of different experiences. You know. You'd said somewhere in I'm trying to think of like what what part I read it of yours. Um but something about and I kind of alluded to this in like some of our conversations, but something about like the collective energy or like this energetic field that all of this stuff plays into. And so as far as like what I'm into and what like where my interests go and like getting into um, like Rupert Sheldrake's idea of morphic resonance where this collective field where people can tap into to channel in knowledge or source higher whatever or this I guess just the ex like the collective experience I wonder then like as far as humanity goes I would I would think that as far as other cultures being able to understand this like Caucasian experience, there can be something that they can tap into in order to be able to grasp it, to be able to comprehend it without necessarily having to go through the direct experiences of it themselves. Right, like, I wonder if that's how, like where art comes into play or where music comes into play or how we um, been shifting. Well, you can use the muse. You can use the muse, the art, but that's too complex for indigenous minds. Art is, uh, especially the paintings and things of that nature that you see during the medieval are, are very complex within their uh, digitizing format on how they read to your mind, okay? Uh, versus say, uh, you know, the Mayan walls and you, you'd have to sit down and decode that. This well, decoding the function of it, I think, is a lot different too because if you go back to like your, your cave drawers, right, then you're starting to get into like the shamanistic aspects of what art is and it's not so much about creating something of aesthetic beauty perhaps but more so along the lines of using the powers of symbols, words, that sort of thing to bring something into reality, to manifest it, to create that spell. So there's a, a different function that the arts have. We've well, lost yeah. Western culture. And that's why I wrote this three volume series. Okay. Because in this three volume series, it is embodied. That is all the Western culture right there. I, I've seen the movie Interview with the Vampire. I didn't really want, I didn't really see it until I wrote this material. I didn't really see Frankenstein. I really didn't see The Game of Thrones. I didn't understand any of those films. See, the majority of people, the indigenous mind is just watching those films because there's a shootout, there's some sword swinging and things like that. They don't hear the majority of the script, nor do they know the political dynamics or whatever other cultural dynamics is being enforced through the circumstances of the uh, scenes, okay? They don't understand all of those levels. And um, this is the only place that I know where you're gonna be able to get the comprehension of that. Because in reality, a lot of the stuff inside this material would be quote unquote embarrassing for Europeans to present by themselves. Um, and that's only because of the way the native mind is built. They don't really got the comprehension of the totality of existence and the extremes one can be put to. Once they understand uh, the extremes of existence, then you'll get a far better common courtesy. And that's basically what all this material is for. 
as that is the original reason they stated the devil arrived in Europe was to enforce common courtesy, you see. You know. Is that empathy? And teaching uh -huh. empathy or like the common courtesy, right? Like going into empathy and teaching compassion at the same time, but then it go it just plays into this dualistic nature of like war and peace. Right. And they're both one of the same. I can't, you're not going to appreciate uh, life until, you know, I've made you sleep by a carcass. And then you'll appreciate life, boy, great. It'd be interesting, yeah, because the, the judgments that people place on words or ideas or concepts, I think, definitely prevents or shapes the experiences that they have when they have the experiences, because... I mean, we can we can go through the same experience, right, or go through the same thing, but have a completely different experience of that experience, right? Because we have different filters, we have different suits, we have different names, so we're we're attuned to picking up different frequencies and attuned to picking up different information. So I guess our job then would be to share that, right? Then to communicate that to others, right? To further expand, to further move our species. You're right. The male no. dynamic and needing to procreate. Right. See, procreation is where the human has the problem. And there's a lot of uh, metaphysical elements. There's a lot of elements in this thing. And the main reason is because, you know, in our modern day standpoint, Women have been have been given the room to use it as a baiting vice, to use sex as a baiting vice for a form of slavery. You know, the base the baseline that we're not accepting as humans when it comes to our uh, biology is humans are mammals and mammals are polygamous. Mammals are only monogamous by three to five percent. Our society is based on monogamy exclusively for the stagnation of for the stagnation of entrepreneurial and industrial development amongst the common man and it is also uh, based upon monogamy to allow the uh, richer classes to stay rich by using by manipulating the woman's mind and with a multitude of different vices like makeup and um, you know, Chuck E. Cheese and graduation parties and a lot of different institutions, you know, and a lot of other products, stockings and, you know, eyelashes and hair care and things of these natures where the female actually goes home. She has to play out the whole position of the crone witch, take all the money, extract it to the society. And while the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor, and the woman stays in between that, not knowing what's going on because she's being manipulated by the higher classes. You see, so until that cord is broken, and that cord isn't going to be broken until uh, Western culture uh, unleashes, or well, I know I'm going to be unleashing it once I write a book on it. But the common man doesn't know the sciences of uh, cuckoldry and witchcraft, and that is basically all where all the information pertaining to woman's psychological power over man is embodied at. That was extracted out of Western society during the late 1800s. They erased all the words that identified this type of activity inside the dictionaries. They took them out. So then after that 50 year loop from that time period, 1940, 1950, they started the whole uh, woman working in a factory thing by putting the man in the in war and slaughtering off the men. They put the men in the meat cans, basically, slaughter them all off and, make, and took the woman outside of the house. And um, now we have the odd, the uh, insanity that we have today. Crystal meth, human trafficking, uh, our autism rates are, you know, I think one out of 50, no, one out of 80 right now. In 1950, it was, I think, one out of like 50 million. Well, it was a crazy, it was a large number. I think like one out of five million 
uh, autistic children were being born in 1950, 1960. So our rates for uh, devolving have exponentially grown. But also with human devolution, we have uh, we have robot transhumanization and all of that developing, okay? The, in order for the robots to rise, the humans have to degenerate because the humans beg for the robots in the state and the statuses of their degeneration. Autism is an interesting topic, and I did, I got to do some research um, within autism or, like, autistic kids several years ago and looked at, like, visual habituation and autism, and, and, like, during our break periods, we got to do, or the kids got to play games, and there were a couple of games, one specifically called Mindflex, that these kids on the autism spectrum are so freaking good at that like more typically developing kids even adults have a really difficult time have a difficult have a difficult time with it and the game there's like a, a headpiece that goes on and there's a motion sensor that's connected to a fan on the board game and the idea is to build an obstacle course for which you have to navigate a floating ball around and so you use the power of your mind to control the speed of the fan or the power of the fan or the height of the ball. And then you get it to go through the obstacles. And the kids on the autism spectrum are so good at it. They just, they get it. They're like, what do you mean? I just use my mind power. And there's a, a Star Wars game that's similar, but it's a long cylinder, a long tube. And there's a ball inside. And same thing, you have a, a like remote headpiece. And the idea is to get the ball to levitate either level one, level two, level three. I don't know. Yoda walks you through the different steps. Mm -hmm. The autistic kids, they get it. They're just like tapped into this other frequency or they get something with mechanics or perhaps the robotics that more typically neurodeveloping people don't understand. So I'm curious to see how people will adapt themselves to be more robotic before robots really happen or how like there's going to be well that well that's based upon what you're saying with the autism thing yeah okay what you stated with autism is uh the locking of a certain nerve structure in one location of the brain that's usually dealing with a high form of my of mathematics so these individuals that are called savants usually are masters in piano, masters in agriculture, I mean, masters in engineering. They can master in architecture. They're very good with blueprints. They can draw blueprints. They're very good with uh, objectifying things and tunnel, tunnel visioning things. But the human mind and the human body, the physiology of it is actually designed to do that in all departments, not just in one small minute area and can't communicate in other areas you see so what we're really talking about is the fact that the human body is uh built with over 50,000 to 60,000 uh miles of nerves that's just i think that's just in the brain alone not the the rest of the body you know so and when you understand the true principle of what a human is they're nothing but the nervous system a brain and the eyeballs. But for the woman, they would also be the uterus because there's a large uh, system of nerves around the uterus. Now, due to the complexity of the nerves and how many nerves there is, the human can live in a multitude of different formats, which are actually infinite, especially when you include blood, culture, when you include uh, astrology, and then when you also include geographical location, the type of lifestyles that humans can survive by or the different common grounds that we can agree upon are infinite okay it's unstoppable and that's uh how our nerves are built up so when it comes down to the autism or the uh what's the other one um you got autism and then you also have the other one the, uh I forgot what it's called. Uh, but anyways, what'd you say? 
Asperger's? Oh, uh, yeah, that's one of them. Uh, Asperger's is one of them. A uh, Down syndrome. Yeah, the Down syndrome. Um, these things are in our society right now because the human body hasn't had as much oil in their body as we've ever had before. These things are not to be accepted as uh, a normality. They're not. They're a malfunction to humans, period. What the major malfunction is, is that we have too many synthetics inside our body. You have synthetic chemicals coming from the sodas. You got synthetics coming off the paints, off of your plates and your cups and things of that nature. We have uh, detergents that are rubbing on our skins and things of that nature that have never been inside the human picture ever before the development of America. So due to the fact that we have a lot of these synthetics, it has degenerated the human existence. And now we have these high rate numbers of the autism and the Down syndrome and this and that. To try to go around it and not and not find out what the source is is uh, definitely the doorway for technology and the robot development, which is not necessary. We've and been to ignoring, get ignoring ignoring the source because I think a lot of people know what the source is and what these things are caused by. They just don't care because they they want to promote the robotic. They want to promote something beyond the human form because they don't necessarily have respect or the care for the empathy for. Mother Nature? Well, I mean, they don't know. I mean, it's 2020. Somebody that was born in 2000 probably thinks that there's a hot dog tree because they have no experience with nature. They don't need to have an experience with nature, as of what we know. They don't understand that a grape turns into a raisin. They don't understand that a prune comes from a plum, okay? And they're not going to because it's not important. Okay. What's important is the euphoria world that has been given to them. So you have to understand the human body is designed for euphoria. Euphoria comes in a multitude of different uh, ways, dopamine, da, 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 so on and so forth. Orgasmic nature. Human is built uh, biologically to produce orgasms. So we search for the high by nature. All humans do. And little kids nowadays are being immediately rushed with a video game high. Uh, the hot dog high, their uh, high colors, um, smells of fast moving cars, the Fast and Furious movies. There's a lot of different layers of software that's been loaded onto the minds of the recent generations and also my generation that has uh, degenerated mankind and has also degenerated the, plant, the environment around us. Um, and it's going to continue that way unless it's stopped. And um, it's going to have to be stopped with ferociousness. And I don't think uh, we're going to be doing anything too much about it. It's, it's a complex picture. And uh, it's a complex picture with a simple answer. But a lot of people aren't going through the complex picture to get to the simplicity of the answer. So, you know. Well, they like to live in the illusion and they like to live inside of the box. And they don't want to have to to deal with it. Yeah, but see, people are only going to live like that if they haven't had good sex lives. You see that? When you have a good sex life, you can you appreciate nature, you appreciate a woman, you appreciate the opposite sex a lot greater. And that is a key element that is destroying the majority of America and the world right now is the porn, inclusion, and a lot of other things that shifting us off from each other. So, you know. And then one thing that I was going to say was uh, today, a peach of today, I mean, it takes 64 peaches of today to equal to the nutrient of one peach in 1960. 64. Yeah. So that I just said that to show you the nutrient balance is completely off. And this is also much of it. Yeah. As soon as you pick your food. I mean, just right. to modify everything too, because like talk about synthetic stuff. I mean, we're <laughs> we're genetically modifying everything to be whatever we want it to be, basically. Right, and that's one reason why we're not attracted to each other anymore is because the scent, pheromone scent, is altered. We're not attracted to each other anymore because our uh, chemical status is altered as well. 
the majority of men. A high level of stress put on us too to have to like maintain the status quo or to maintain the material stuff to get the to get the nails to get the hair to get all the. It's a lot of pressure. Right, right, right. But see, you only fall into those pressure lines when you're not educated about existence and your self esteem structure is low. And your self esteem structure is going to be low. Once you are not worshipped behind closed doors, <laughs> see a lot of these things <laughs> exactly. See <laughs> a lot of these things boil down to uh, your love structure. Everything boils down to your love structure, even the security of your family. You know, it boil everything is going to be boiled down to how much love you can produce and uh, your understanding of existence, which will allow you to uh, endure and have. Uh, endurance towards uh other people's situations you know and maintain an element of love you know so if you've never been worshipped behind closed doors <laughs> yeah well, i mean that <laughs> i mean it keeps away hoarding it keeps away obesity it keeps away a large line of things if you like right now if you knew uh, uh, somebody was on their way over to your home that you've already had good sexual relations with, or this is a new person, you're going to make sure your house is clean. You're going to make sure you're smelling good. You're going to make sure you're looking good. Exactly. There is an inspection going on. You see what I'm showing you? So <laughs> Get a little close to things. and Yeah. You're going to make sure you got your hair dyed. You're going to make sure right. You're going to do all this inspection because, you know, the sex element, which is something that humans are born with to experience, is uh, the best with this person. And then once we get this field over with, we can get a lot of these other fields, all this pedo stuff and all this other craziness that's going on in society will subsist, you know. Yeah, because people's, people's need to fulfill their urges or at least just to like have that that connection it's been so distorted in so many different ways and then they find the synthetic outlets for it or it's just so easy to obtain that it just well let me well let me say this this is really important and this is a part of the western thought and this is also shown in my book and i don't want you to get offensive okay but white <laughs> women white no let me say this White women have been enforced to understand sexuality in a medical sense and not necessarily, uh, quote unquote, the immature sense that uh, the uneducated take it in as a fun time. The medical sense of uh, sexual capacity is also related to theology. Theology states that you are here to work, okay? the Christian format of thinking, and also the Judaic, is uh, you are here to work. You are here to be consistently working nonstop. And uh, because biologically you build up sexual tension, sexual tension will, in essence, uh, disturb your workload and your workforce. So you must do whatever you need to do. You will satisfy your woes or your ills to get back to work. So whatever the case is, whatever it is that advances or makes you feel clear enough to get back to work, we're going to do that. And uh, white women have been trained with this thought pattern since Greece. Greece had brothels open 24-7, so did Rome 24-7, and so did medieval times 24-7. But we also have to understand, like I stated earlier, the uterus is intelligence. Okay, and sexual secretions is a form of intelligence. So with that being stated as well, that's another reason why uh, the advancement across the planet has occurred is because white males have done far more sexual expansion and dominance than any other race on this planet. You know? And they've done that first with their women before they did it with anybody else. It's tricky because... They come along with no no holds bar and have just yeah 
polluted so much of the energy or polluted so much of the sexual energy that it's it's lost its power in a lot of ways or its power has been distorted by the the entities or the energies and the stagnating stuff that has been built up for so long and that energy gets transferred and passed on and so you have to be so mindful and so careful about who you're having sex with, right? And about like who these things are happening with, because you can't just go out and, and do it because your body says so. And because there's a thing, I think when we're more responsible and more conscientious about it, or about like the possibilities of what can come from something, great things can happen and we can create amazing things out of that. But if we're not aware of it or if it's coming out of a like a, a space to feed the ego or just a space to burn off energy right then we're talking about directing this like really powerful energy that can be incredibly destructive and has been really destructive well i mean it it ends up being real tricky in this area because it's more desirable for males than it is for females because females can get left with the very bad brunt of the stick, whether we're talking about social de uh, defamation or we're talking about uh, being left with the baby or pregnancy. And we don't have to say that in the standpoint of the man just going out for milk. He could have went out to bring home food from the uh, woods and didn't make it because the bear killed him. So, you know, it's things like that that... Uh, put women in a questionable situation that doesn't allow them to uh, be open um, and forceful in the same level that a male is in this area. And due to the fact that we put a lot of technology and other things in between us today, it's definitely made it far more difficult. And um, now we have sexual substitutes, toys and stores and all this other stuff. So we're erasing each other slowly, surely. Well, I think it, it gets tricky, too, or I don't know if men think about it f first or not, or if there's other things that's, that are driving their thoughts. I don't, I don't remember what the numbers were, too, but I read it uh, within, like, the last couple of days, but something along the lines of, like, a man can sleep with so many women within so many period of time and end up with, you know, thousands of children. Where in like during that same amount of time or in like that nine month span, a woman can have like one child. So there's, you know, there's like many many children as she can carry, whether it be like twins or triplets or something like that. But as far as like how we procreate and our experience procreation, it's it's very different. Well. Like I said earlier, humans are mammals, and mammals are polygamous. And uh, with polygamy type of experiences, I can tell you personally, there is a far more larger love production that's going on um, within that type of union. Um, you know, but once again, humans are, you know, we're psychological animals that, you know, uh, we're tool-creating animals, you know. So we can um our psychological dynamic can, i mean our sex can change over time on how one likes it pertaining to you know whatever uh their fetishes we're all fetishes and everybody likes you know their sex in specific ways due to what they've ever whatever they've experienced so you know there's uh a peanut butter and jelly type combination that has to happen with that. And when it does, you know, you have the Garden of Eden at your feet. You well, speaking well, of peanut butter and jelly, I think it's almost time for me to go make breakfast. Because we do got to wrap it up. We're nearing the end of our second hour here already. So tell us, Keenan Booker, where where can we find you? If anybody's looking to chat with you, wanting to know more about you, where can they find your books? I did put the link to your book in the chat room, so if you're in the chat room, it is there. Okay. Um, you can find me at KeenanBooker.com. You can find me at StargatePublishing.com. You can find me at uh, KickedOutOfHeaven.com. Um, 
those are my sites. If you want to email me, you can email me at KenanBooker83 at gmail.com. Awesome. It's such a pleasure getting to talk to you, Kenan, and I look forward to doing more shows with you here in the future. And we've got Mitchell coming on next with Revolution in the Morning, so that'll be exciting. You can get all fired up now that you're now that you're awake, now that you're a little bit more conscious in the morning, you know, ready to absorb the day, take on the knowledge, and bring it in. Revolution Radio at Studio A here on freedomslips.com, revolution.radio. I am your hostess here on uh, Cultivating Consciousness, Kelsey Sweet. You can find more about me on kelseysweet.com. Find me on the social medias. I'm floating around out there. So thank you for listening. Thanks for showing up. Hopefully the this, like music will play here because I'm going to go eat some food and I'm going to go right back to bed maybe. Coffee kicking in. So. <laughs> Everyone's like, why do you do this show so early in the morning? Because I love it. <sighs> so well, thanks again, Keenan. Um, yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, See you again. Yeah, bye. I'm going to close this out and just wait for the music to play. Mitchell, it's all you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>